It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're going to be doing Falling Sky. Um, I explained in a previous video uh, what's been going on with the tournament. So if you're very confused, you can find that one. It's probably near this one in whatever list you're using or in the chronology of all the videos I've done. Um, so if you look behind me, uh, this is kind of continuing from that video here. We see the points that everyone has and kind of the broader um, loser's bracket. Uh, English leg that we're doing right now. Um, so basically how this is going to work, well I explained in the last video, but now you see the points. They're, um, they're, I'm going to keep them in the order that they started in, uh, so greatest amount of points to least amount. The people over here don't have many points so they had to get squeezed over because if you don't have a lot of points you, you get less privileges than the people who have a lot, well, relatively a lot of points. Everyone has negative points, so it's not that much. But we're going to do our character draw now for Falling Sky. And I'm excited to play this. Um, I've been really enjoying this game, and I would like to chronicle it, which is part of what kind of got me over the hump to get this started again. So, thanks, Falling Sky. Um, so first of all, we have Dick. Dick should be fun to play with. Potential Roman. Romans are supposed to be aggressive. Um, and... Dick is, can be fairly aggressive, though he's pretty cool, too. Um, so we'll see. He might be an Adui. Uh, you have to forgive my pronunciation. I don't know how these things are pronounced. But Adui is one of the factions, and they're diplomats. Okay, next we have Pegasus. Pegasus has shown some real chops, uh, especially in the, I think she was in the Pablo Origins uh, series. She did really well there. It'll be exciting to see how she does in this game. All right. It's two down, two to go. And we go to the next one. Uh, Tater as in Tot. Tater as in Tot. She's really fun too. Fast, industrious, sensitive. Hmm. hmm. She could be a Roman too, or maybe an Arvani. All right. Finally, we have Mooney of Aqualad fame. Okay, I'm gonna get the game set up. See if they have any like special um, abilities that they can invoke. Actually, we can just look. Um, I guess I have them written here. Mooney, 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 Mooney. This is where it would be helpful. Oh, he has no abilities. Uh, Pegasus has biology, so maybe she'll get some like, uh, I'll, I'll probably look for a capability, and they'll just start the game with the capability. It's not gonna be fair! Alright, uh, Pegasus, and next we have Tater Law. Ooh. That might help her be a Roman, and I'm sure there's a capability that goes for that. And then Dick, biology as well. All right, so I have to pull out some capabilities. That's going to make the card count a, a one shy, because you're supposed to play with 70 of the 72 cards for the scenario I'm going to be doing. And that's going to put us at 69 cards. So that's also going to be a change. So this isn't going to be like your standard game of Falling Sky. It's going to be slightly modified for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Falling Sky from the English leg. Alrighty, here we are. It's all set up and we have our special capabilities that everyone got. So I think I should talk about those first because that's going to be very different for those of you who are familiar with the game. Not very different. They're capabilities that are in the game. It's not like I'm adding something except that I'm adding that they get them at the beginning of the game. So let's start with um, Pegasus over here. Pegasus, she had um, biology as her special skill. Um, and so she has German horses. German horses are really pretty good, I've found. They allow you to double your enemy losses in one region unless they have a fort or a citadel. So her skill with biology has helped her to tame these horses and use them to her advantage. Over to Tater as in Tat, who is our Roman um, Caesar. She has baggage trains. Um, baggage trains. Law was her ability. It was hard to find. There's a lot of like law cards, but not law capabilities. So baggage trains was kind of the closest one I could think of. I kind of waffled back and forth between this and uh, a card that had to do with like organizing the army. But uh, this one seemed like a little more law-like. Maybe the law is used to impose um, uh, additional tariffs on the Roman citizenry so that um, she can better prosecute her war um, in and uh, keeping the, the Gauls down, uh, the Gaelic people down. And then we have Dick. Dick is the Adui. He had biology as well. There was really nothing at first blush that seemed biological in there. Um, 
I originally went with another card. But then I went back to this. This says it has good arteries. And you know, if you are well aware of biology, you might be more likely to take care of your arteries. Now I know they're speaking of trade arteries, but we work with what we can get, what we have with the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournaments. Okay, so this card has to do with uh, Remy's influence. This is the, the Remy people right here, their tribe. Currently they're allied to the Romans. So what the card does if you do the event uh, really matters uh, who, if anyone, the, the Remy people are allied to. Uh, right now in this early situation in the game, and much of the game, but early situation in the game, the Belgique have the Romans breathing down their neck in Brit Britannia. Um, one benefit of them being breathing down their neck from Britannia rather than somewhere else on the map is if the Romans cross, they can't do anything special once they cross. They have to wait until their next activation to do anything. And the Romans can oftentimes sweep in and use their special activity to um, mess with you right off the bat. So they have that kind of thing, but they, they have to decide what, what to do here. Do they want to try to you know, kind of work on getting this region. Uh, they have a Roman fort kind of in their heartland next to their leader. Um, or or what? Do they want to go on the offensive early on or do they want to start building up for the storm that's coming from across the water? Um, one thing they don't want is they don't want the Romans to do this, this event because that would mess with their stuff right here. So they also can't really do the event for themselves because they do not have influence in Remy, so they're going to do a command plus special act, uh, no special activity. So that's going to make it so that no one can do this event. The reason they think the Romans might do the event is because the Adui get first dibs on the next card, so their dick's likely to pass there, and that would let the Romans act. So, considering that, I think Pegasus is going to start building up. So she's not going to worry too much about the Romans, she's just going to put some tribes down, and that's going to let her get some more forces here. That's going to cost her three, however. That's pretty expensive first move for very little bang, but she's hoping something will come through. Both the Adui and the Romans, both Dick and Tate, are passed. Uh, so that's going to bring us to Mooney's Aqualad, Mooney here. Mooney's situation is kind of sad at the beginning of the game, this longer game. Uh, doesn't have his leader on the map, Vingendrux. Um, so, kind of has two basic choices on what to deal with um, based on his start position. So he's down here in the south, he could start building up. This is kind of his main homeland. Or there's this really nice area up here that's oftentimes in contention. So he could try to um, spread into that. The problem is the Adui are also there and they have these special moves that let them, if they have enough money, just kind of get rid of his stuff. So he could build up there only to have them take it away. The nice thing for, for him is it costs him less to build than it costs them to take it away, especially if he builds an ally. Um, however, they are going to be mo moving next with Boy! Um, and so he has to think about whether or not he wants to... Um, I, think, I think he's going to he's gonna go ahead and just put an ally down. I like this longer scenario because there is this time for just kind of peaceful building when you start. There are, there are tough situations to deal with, but you also can just kind of do a little building, have a little, you know, take a deep breath before the storm rages and just kind of seeing when that storm rages is also fun. So these two passed, he went there, they're going to go to the side, they're ineligible on the next card, they're going to come up, next card is Boy, and then Pompey, Pompey is, Pompey, Pompey is coming next. Um, so that's probably going to mean the Romans might want to pass for that. Dick's trying to stay cool with everyone, at least uh, to, to begin with. Um, the, he's looking at two potential events. Um, one involves Cisalpina here, and it would allow him to place probably an ally here because he, he's thinking he and Rome are buddies, he and Tater are buddies, and she's not going to attack him. They kind of are dependent upon each other. At some point in the game, maybe less so, but um, they, they have a symbiotic relationship to start with. The Adui, who, which is Dick's blue faction here, um, are the are the Gaelic faction that is sort of more welcoming of Rome and trying to use Rome coming in for their own political advantage, from what I understand. Um, 
probably also put an ally there because there's no contention. Really tricky wanting to put something in the German area. The Germans just keep coming and coming and coming. They're really, they can be really annoying and they can keep taking your money. However, Dick is convinced that he will be able to get that money back. So he'd also probably put an ally there. So you get to throw down three allies, which would be nice. Um, the second event that he could pass to do, by contrast, would involve him um, basically taking money from people. Now, he could also just try to do a command and a special activity, which, you know, what could he do for a command? He could put down some allies. He could do, he could mess with people there. He's trying to avoid getting the Arveni mad, even though they're, they're kind of weak right now. Um, he wants to just kind of build his trade structure. So I think to do that, he's going to go ahead and take the first event. Um, maybe not what you would do, but this is what Dick's going to do. He's going to set that there, set that there, set that there. And he gets four dollars. One, two, three, four. He's trying to become an economic power. Now that, um, I don't know why I put him on pass. He's doing the event. Um, the Belgique, they could either pass and work on the next card, which they're first on, or they could do a command plus special activity. I think they'll go ahead and pass. Pegasus is low on money, so why not pass and do that? And then she can maybe freeze someone else out of an action probably Rome, and go from there. One thing I forgot to note, uh, how this game is going to be different, I, I know I talked up these um, capability cards from your standard game of Falling Sky, is that there's the broader, um, the broader um, metagame of the real people, multi-game, solitary, mega tournament, and those, those point things. Is going to affect how people might behave at the end. They're less. They're going to be less. Um, well, they're going to have a counter countervailing uh, impetus to uh, try to just get you know as close to zero or above zero as possible a score for themselves, rather than shut someone out. Because even if someone else wins the game, if they win the game and you know say a, a Tater is at like negative one, she's going to still be able to keep playing. So they're going to be like having having to think about their negative score and how the the end game condition is going to affect that, as well as you know whether you win the game or not uh, by the standard rules isn't going to matter so much. Um, although you know that if you do win the game, you are going to have a higher score, and then you know that's going to be better. So if they can win, they're going to try to win, but they're going to be less likely to sacrifice themselves to stop someone else from winning. So that could make for a shorter game. We'll have to see. The player who plays the Belgique needs to be one who is heart-strong and steadfast and good at taking a beating. Uh, Pegasus is proud of her ability to survive and she's going to have to put that ability to use right now. Uh, right now she's under threat of the Romans uh, in the Artrobates region. Um, and that's further complicated. So she has, a, she has the ability to do a command plus special activity, but that's complicated by the fact that the next card up is an Arveni card. So she was hoping the Arveni would maybe block off access to the event, but they're probably going to want to pass. Mooney's probably going to want to pass um, in order to to make use of that event. Place the Legion. Remove three allies. One Roman. One. Yeah. Um, doesn't want to pass that up. And so, what can she do? She was thinking of ambushing originally and taking out some of the Romans here as sort of a kamikaze attack. Um, that doesn't seem like it would work that well because then the Romans could turn around and use this event which gets rid of would get rid of all her money and all the Arbeni's money. It's probably going to be the upshot of that. So instead what she's going to do is she's just going to rally some more and be, you know, just kind of hole up to the north. Um, things could have gone, gone much worse for Tater in just charging down here but it ended up being okay. So that's going to take two. No special activity and do like that. The Arveni will go ahead and pass, get themselves some money. The Romans, hmm. The Romans, I think she's gonna just go for it. Tater's not someone who likes to wait around. She's gonna go for it, and she is going to try, she's gonna just clear out um, Artrobates here of Belgian influence. Now, 
normally I'd have to do some calculations as to what her force total is, but she's got so much that each of these is worth two while Caesar's there. So that's 10, 11 losses they take to the four pieces. So I guess I did do the calculations. You're welcome for that. Uh, it's going to give the Romans another point, and that's going to take a point away from the Belgique, and that's going to cost the Romans two dollars. And that's going to be that, and that's going to be that, and that's going to go whop, whop. Pretty soon it could be winter now. We're in the, the area where a card could turn up, and it says winter, and then we'll do the winter phase. Mooney went in ahead and did a double rally there and there. Thought about doing this citadel, but was concerned that the next, you can turn a, you know, if it has a little square there, that means it's a city. You can replace an ally with a citadel, which helps you in defense. Um, but this Ballastay card came up, was, was up next, and when he was like, oh, I could place a citadel to protect me from Adui, but that would not probably do much. Uh, later on, it might be good to put a citadel up just to free up more allies, but that's pretty optimistic there. So I did that, the Adui passed, and now we have this Ballastay card. So the Rome has to act on this well, wants to act on this, uh, could take this capability, which would help uh, going against citadels, as I said, um, and also protecting forts. Pretty nice. Uh, in a, other situations, Rome really has to ask itself if it's worth taking the card. In this case, it probably is, because winter is next. So Rome can't march anywhere. So Rome's other option would probably be to dis place a dispersal marker here, which would mean, like, it would take, well, it would go to gather. So the dispersal markers they basically last two winters and then they go away. And while they're in place, no one can no one can befriend that, that tribe because the tribe is dispersed. So the game starts with one that's dispersed here, the Veneti. The Veneti, Veneti after a com, uh, at this coming winter, will start to gather. And then the next winter, they will come back. Um, so Rome does have a, a line back, that's important. If Rome doesn't have a line back, I mean, that's assuming the Adui say yes, but the Adui don't want to piss Rome off right now. Um, back to Provincia. If Rome didn't have this line back, uh, Rome could potentially lose several legions just being stuck up here. It's, it's hard on Rome to be stuck up away from home from during the winter. So, to be a little briefer about it, Tater is going to take that card. And now she has a couple of capabilities. She's really getting strong. And that also lets the Adui do one more action. Hmm. Command plus special activity here. What would Dick like to do? What he'd really like to do is be able to put more allies down because um, that will pay off it come the winter. Uh, there's not really a lot of options for that. Luckily, the Germans won't be popping up, won't, won't be doing anything right now. Um, could march out, but doesn't have a lot of Adui warbands on the map. Maybe that's the answer. Just need to get some Adui warbands on the map. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll also do some trade. So that's going to cost four right there. One, two, three, four did four rally, so it could rally down here too. So I think Dick thinks that that would feel threatening to the Romans, so he's just going to leave the ally there and not do anything with that. Go ahead and do a, a trade. Now since normally uh, Dick would have to ask Rome if Rome agrees to like letting this be worth more, I think something like that, but um, doesn't have to ask anything within its uh, supply line. Uh, yields plus two resources. So Rome's going to let it. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. This can't be part of the supply line because the Germans aren't going to allow that. So it's going to bump back up ten dollars. The Adui are really great with money, really great at making friends, and really great at annoying people. All right, so this is an abbreviated winter phase, as I mentioned earlier. We're going to start with the quarters. Quarters is going to um, let people move their stuff around. Um, do people really want to move their stuff around? I don't know that they do. Uh, I think actually Belgique will move one there. Leave that there. Our Veni don't really have any options to move people. I think the Edoui actually will move some people here. So they can start spreading out this way. Um, they can move that way. And then the Romans are going to 
maybe leave a couple of these guys here. I'm gonna just, they're gonna go underground at the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now while I'm moving them. And these are all gonna head back. Provincia, back in Provincia, uh, Caesar can get some more auxilia, which is nice. Um, if Caesar stayed out in the field, no one would give Caesar any auxilia, which would make Caesar sad. Then the winter thing is gonna go boop. Oh, look, there's three legions here. This is a part of the special setup instructions. Those are gonna pop out there. Um, people also get their money. Rome gets equal to its score. I should check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah, I haven't been keeping up on it because it should have been less four. Uh, so 17 there. Why am I getting 17 though? Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, much less. Yeah, th sorry. Uh, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only eleven for Rome. So Rome's not doing so hot. Um, I forgot. Oh, do we expand it a lot? That's gonna kind of annoy Tater as in Tot. Um, so eleven dollars to Rome, twenty-one. Everyone else gets double their number of tribes. So that's gonna be ten to the Arvini, and uh, ten to the Belgique. They need it, and. Yeah, do we, they get double their tribes plus, that's not all, they get four additional. So they're gonna be, Dick's gonna be sitting on 16 more dollars. That's 27.33. And we're gonna move this over again. The Senate marker is gonna go to Intrigue. That's where it starts in this scenario once it finally comes out. And then finally we'll move it one more over. And then Versindrix, I think is the name, comes on the map. And the Arvini can do some more. Uh, the Venetti are going to disperse. Everyone would flip upside down. And that's going to be it. For now, that's it. But not forever. For Of that, you have my guarantee. At least um, insofar as I can offer such a guarantee. I don't know what's going to happen moment to moment. Things could change. But I expect that I will fully desire in all my heart uh, especially if I can get the video editing software to work, which, which if you're reading or listening to this, I did. Um, I hope in my heart of hearts to get back to this game because it's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing how these folks play it out. I do use real people cards when I'm not um, videotaping the real people multi-game solitary mega tournament, but there's always something a little different when you're talking out each move or, you know, uh, having to justify it to an audience more often when I'm playing just by myself um, I'll sometimes go on autopilot and just kind of make my own decisions um, and just use the cards sometimes but uh, so that it's nice it's a different sort of experience which is partly why I do this um, and I appreciate the opportunity to do this so thanks the internet thanks camera Thanks, Matt Smith of OuterCityLimits.com for giving me that video editing software. That's really helpful. Um, I hope it'll be really helpful. And um, thank you. And thank you, Pegasus. And thank you, Tater. And thank you, Caesar. And thank you, Adui. And thank you, Ambiorix. And thank you, Venturex. And thank you, Runky Twins, for making this game. Bye.